Welcome back you guys to the channel about virtual reality and physical therapy. Today we're talking about how you can use Google Tilt Brush as a rehabilitation tool. First off, if you want to use Google Tilt Brush as a rehabilitation tool, be mindful that you should be seeking a therapist first, maybe even working under the guidance of a licensed physical therapist. If you're doing this at home without any guidance, do remember to be careful, use common sense. If you feel dizzy, any increase in pain or anything, you should stop. I've been using it for a while in pain management. Usually when you have patients that are in a lot of pain, it can be very good to have something distracting as an activity and focus for the physical therapy. You can also use it as a simple measurement and diary tool. There are some contraindications that you should be aware of. If you are still healing in the very acute healing process, you should be very mindful of doing this. The tissue needs to heal before you can do proper rehabilitation. If you have problems with epilepsy, you should be mindful. This is usually not a problem, but please do be mindful. If you have any sort of vestibular problems, which means do you get dizzy easily, do you get nauseous, please be mindful. For some people, there is a bit of nausea associated with VR. It quickly passes though, but if you are affected, you will feel this immediately. And then of course, use common sense and then stop. So the theory behind why physical therapy is very interesting in VR is primarily because of the distraction effect that there is. Our pain perception changes when we are in VR. It most likely has to do with the very immersive nature of VR. When we're transported to a different reality, our mind starts to focus on something else and sometimes we can do a little bit more therapy because we have focus somewhere else. And lastly, of course, you can do your regular exercises in Google Tilt Brush and just see how it looks. It's actually kind of fascinating watching your movement patterns and the repetitions stack up when you're doing it. Without further ado, let's jump into VR and see how we do. So what I really like to do is start with marking the area where I'm actually going to be working from. So the first thing I want to do is to do a measurement. So for the measurement, I'm going to draw a box just touching my feet where I know I have to stand. So I know I have to stand in this square every time I do a measurement. So to start with, and I'm going to pick the red because that's one. I'm going to say, how much pain am I in today? Uh, and it's the 5th of March. And I'm in, uh, let's say, a 7 out of 10 today. I know there are some therapists who will disagree that we shouldn't focus too much of the, on the pain. This could have just been how much excess energy, how are you feeling today, whatever. This is just a, a therapeutical choice. So next I'm going to pick a brush and I'm going to pick the paper one because I can make it really large. And then I'm going to start painting. So if this were a patient or yourself, I would just ask you to squeeze the trigger and raise your arm however much you can. And there you can see a very, very nice depiction on how big your range of motion is. I could ask you to lift it out to your side and do the abduction movement. And we would have a very nice depiction there as well. So what you also could do is you could just swing your arm, make sure that it's stretched while you're doing it, and actually paint your range of motion like this. Like I said, we will have a very nice depiction on where your range of motion is. You could also do rotation. I would choose a different color for that. Let's choose blue, for example. Now you can see the inward and outward rotation as well, depicted as a, a, a color here. And then, of course, as you move along in the days, let's say this is a, a week later, and I actually start to have even more movement here, we could visualize it with a different color. So you could actually see from day to day or week to week how your uh, ability increases. 
Be mindful though that when you're doing this, face forward, uh, try to fixate your body so you're not doing any compensatory movement. This is actually important to get the cleanest measurement possible. But of course you could argue if you are compensating, then you're compensating in the next measurement as well and that would actually be okay. So let's step over here to what I'm going to call the, uh, the therapy thing. And again, I'm just going to paint a box around my feet so I know where to stand and we're just going to write uh, therapy here. So I know where to stand. That's range of motion. This is therapy. So for example, I would ask, I would play charades with my patients. So I would ask them to draw me something and I would say, okay, draw me something and I'm going to have to guess it. So you have that fun interaction and probably you guys can guess what this is. Uh, it's no big secret. And notice how all my movements are tracked here. It's very interesting for me. Okay, it's a flower. You drew a f flower and then you ask them, of course, oh, okay, but could you fill, could you fill it in like this? See, all the time we're moving, we're moving. Very small though right now. But then of course you would ask your patient, hey, how big can you paint that flower? Oh, I don't know, maybe this big. And notice that the movements of course are getting bigger. So you're actually moving more while the mind is distracted by doing something else. I find this fascinating and it works really well. Um, of course there are going to be some patients who don't want to play charades because it's unprofessional. Um, those are probably the people which are not uh, ready or interested in VR and then you would simply just do conventional therapy. This is okay. VR is not for everyone but I do find that it has a rather large appeal. And of course like I was um, mentioning uh, before that you could for example if you're doing diagonal uh, things here you could actually see the quality of movement. You could ask people to draw a straight line here. If they have tremors, you would actually be able to see those tremors depicted in the drawing. You could work with rotation. Right now, I'm just rotating uh, with the wrist, but you could also ask your patient to rotate with the elbow or the, uh, the whole arm while it's stretched. So you can do a lot, everything is tracked and it's very interesting and you would of course here you would save this sketch and it would all, always want to like uh, want to take a picture, I'll just take the, the date and the pain and now it's added to my sketchbook so now I could come back day after day and add to this sketch measuring my progress and actually training with myself or my patient. So Google Tilt Brush, a very simple tool, but I think it has a lot of very interesting therapeutical applications. So you guys, I hope this was inspiring to you. Hope that got your minds thinking about how you can use virtual reality for physical therapy. It doesn't have to be specific apps, you can use almost any virtual reality game for physical therapy. So I hope we got the gears turning. As usual, this channel is for all those people who want to learn more about virtual reality and physical therapy. And if you want to support us, do hit that subscribe button, that like button, that share button and the little bell for notifications. We really appreciate it. Until next time, see you soon.